Hi everyone and welcome to our live presentation on fast formulations. So we do first of all, just so you know, we do have a full copy of the presentation that I'm going to go through today in our YouTube folder. So we've got all of our free formulas, all of our reports available in a Dropbox folder. If you already have our free formula and report YouTube link, you will have that Dropbox folder. You can go there, the presentation is there waiting for you. If you don't have that link, please contact us, info at personalcarescience.com.au. I've written the uh, email address in the chat bar. Please uh, just email us and we will send you the Dropbox link and then you can access every single one of our live presentations. You can access all of our free formulas, all of our report, background information. Uh, everything's in there just through a Dropbox link. So if you already have that, you can access it now. Please pull up the uh, live presentation, Fast Formulations. If you don't have that link, just email us and we'll send it through to you. So now, um, we'll go straight into this topic. It is a big one, um, but definitely one that I posted a video recently about fast formulations and we had a phenomenal response to that. So thank you very much for watching um, and thank you very much for all of your interest in that topic. And of course that made me think, well, hey, you guys probably want a live where you can ask some questions and get some more information. Um, so again, I've got those links uh, in this presentation. I've got a couple of fast formulation videos. So I thought what I'd do is start off by talking to you about what is a fast formulation? So let's talk about what it's not. Uh, a lot of people think that a fast formulation is where you have a pre-prepared base sitting on a warehouse shelf or manufacturing shelf, or whatever, uh, and then you start adding some actives and things to it. It is definitely not that. So please, if you've got a piece of paper handy, just write down, it is not adding some actives to a pre-prepared base. A fast formulation is when you have a, a formulation chassis. You have a formula that is adaptable to a multitude of electrolyte, pH, compatibility conditions. And I will explain all of this a bit more for you. Obviously, that's what this entire live is all about. But it is all about creating a formula that is then really adaptable, really stable, able to tolerate just about any sort of active you wanna to add to it so that you know how the product's going to perform and feel, you know it's got good stability, but then you can add some of the latest innovative ingredients, actives, um, anything that's, that's trending, you can add that into the formula, make a sample, run some very brief uh, and basic stability to prove or to accompany your proven stability for this base chassis product. Uh, and of course you can get to market a lot faster. So I will elaborate on all of this. And like I say, I've got a lot more detail in the presentation. Um, let's, let's really break it down into its, its parts. So why would we want a fast formulation? Well, anyone who's been formulating for any amount of time will know that the typical development, if everything goes to plan, from concept to launch, you're really talking about a minimum nine month development schedule. And that's if everything goes right. Um, and what are we talking about here? So we're talking about um, you're starting from a concept, starting from scratch, and then you want to you pick your actives to support your marketing claims. You're picking all your ingredients to get the right sensory experience for your consumer. You've got to run your preliminary accelerated stability. You've got to run your pilot batch testing. Um, of course, you've got to develop your labels and your artwork and everything like that. Again, all of this for a standard development takes minimum nine months, usually. 12 months. And again, I'm really emphasizing here if everything goes right. You know, if, if you're listening here now, please just in the chat, just go, yep, I know what you're talking about there. I know that some people say, oh, you can do it in, in way less, but that you can't possibly get your accelerated stability data done for a unique and revolutionary formula in, in less than, you know, three months. So, and you can't order in raw materials even in less than three months. So it usually is a nine month minimum. And then let's talk about some of the logistical issues that we're all experiencing since COVID. And that just adds to it, that makes it even harder. So anyone, like I say out there, that's that's worked with concept developments, you're gonna know what I'm saying when I say, look, it is a minimum nine months. And that's assuming everything goes right. So the concept of a fast formulation, they're also called uh, minimally disruptive formulas. You might've heard that term. Fast formulation, minimally disruptive formula, they're the same thing. 
And essentially what it is, it is a tried and true formula that you've already put through rigorous stability testing. You've already picked a lot of the functional materials that go into that product uh, and you've tested it under all sorts of extreme conditions so that you know with a very high level of confidence that any innovative ingredient you see at an in cosmetics or an IFSCC or local society meeting that you can put any of these actives into that base chassis formula, make a new sample, run some small accelerated tests that mimic your longer term tests and get really good confident results that that product's gonna be stable and ready to commercialize in about three months. So we're taking what would normally be nine to 12 months if everything goes right, and we're bringing it down to about a three month schedule. And again, that three months really is because, especially uh, with today's logistical issues around the world, you really can't get everything else together faster than three months at this stage. So what does this mean? Well, it means that when you're formulating one of these products, you're actually doing a lot of the development work and a lot of your accelerated stability one or two years prior to having one of these fast formulation bases. Now I've got a couple of videos. Um, again, in this presentation, I've got links. Fast formulation one, I talk you through how to build an incredibly stable emulsion chassis, and, and there's some natural examples in there as well for you. Um, then I've got another video, fast formulation two, that's foaming examples. Um, and then I've also got uh, another one, fast formulation with actives, a workhorse concept. We're gonna actually come back to that one because one of the reasons that you would create a fast formulation is because you wanna to get to market fast with the latest innovations, trends, the latest trending materials or ingredients that you see at an In Cosmetics event. So for example, there's an In Cosmetics in Bangkok coming up. Um, let's say that we already had our development work done with one of these fast formulation bases and we've already done all our accelerated and pilot batch and scale up testing. So we've already got a great degree of confidence that we have a formula ready to go that we can put just about any active we want into it. And again, it's not a pre-prepared base. Please remember, these are, we're not talking about using pre-prepared bases. This is the very opposite. A pre-prepared base is nothing like a fast formulation chassis. Um, so get that right out of the, the window. Uh, but you've already got your formulation that you're going to use and you know that it's gonna handle just about anything you wanna put in it. It's gonna handle acids, it's gonna handle electrolytes, it's gonna handle all sorts of extracts or actives. So we, we know we've done this, we've already done the development work, we've already been working on this for you know the last one year, 18 months maybe. We've tested it under all sorts of different conditions. We've introduced all sorts of different actives to it already. We know it's robust. We go to In Cosmetics in November, we speak with a supplier, we love one of their actives. We get their sample at the In Cosmetics event or shortly after, we give it to our chemist or you might be the chemist. That chemist then puts together a lab size sample using the fast formulation base, the chassis, with the active and again, they then need to adapt the method slightly or the inputs of water or other materials slightly depending on the active. But again, our, our base chassis is really stable. We know it's robust. We put that in, we've got that done within a week. And then we're testing it out with people. We've got our results in from our, our small um, test subjects or our marketing department. We've got that within another week. And we've got the green light to go ahead. Now we've got enough sample from our supplier that we are then going to make a large lab batch, get that straight into accelerated stability. So that within another two weeks, so within the first month already, we are placing our big orders. Now again, how can I do this? I can do this because let's say that I'm putting it under two weeks of extreme accelerated conditions. I've got it at 50 degrees in an incubator. I've got it at 40 degrees in an incubator. I've got another sample in freeze thaw stability. Um, and it's all tracking along nicely like my other accelerated tests that I've done in the past under extreme conditions with that base chassis. Uh, and it's mirroring the results. So I know, yes, it's, it's still, it's stable. It's showing me that it's as stable as all of the robust testing I've done before. Excellent green light. We get our larger sample in and we can possibly even skip the pilot batch and go straight to full scale production. Because don't forget, we would have done a pilot batch with some extreme conditions or extreme actives on our base chassis. See, this is why it's not like a, a bulk base. We've already, tested a fast formulation 
robustly so that when we add this brand new material we see in, in November in cosmetics, we can then place that big order within one month it arrives another eight weeks later. We are then producing 200 kilos of product or more, maybe two ton of product and getting it straight out into the market within another two or three months maximum. That is how, that is why, that is why we have the fast formulation or minimally disruptive formula concept because it means that we've gotten to market with this brand new innovation or this fantastic material. Maybe it's the material that won the In Cosmetics Innovation Zone Award. And we can get that to market within three or four months of seeing it at the In Cosmetics in November. It means we're in the market first. Everyone else then starts to look like a copy, don't they? That is why you would wanna do it. So let's just go back a step because I've talked about some of this robust testing on the base chassis. What's some essential elements in that base chassis? And again, these videos here that I've, I've talked about, and if you get the presentation, you can click on the hyperlinks. It will take you to our YouTube channel or even on our YouTube channel, just type in fast formulation and you'll get these videos up for you. Um, so what's, what's some of the things that we need to remember? Well, let's talk emulsions specifically because they're the ones that are most commonly done like this. And, I, and I've got to tell you, the big brands, the really big guys, this is how the big guys get to market so fast with some of the latest trends and innovations because they've already done this homework. So even if you're a small brand, you can still achieve this and you can definitely be a fast to market brand without risking instability or incompatibilities. Um, and especially when we talk about the workhorse concept, you can get to market fast with known and predictable high performance of your product too. And that's really, really important. Um, and you can do this really fast. This is how the big guys do it. This is how the big guys get to market so fast. Even as a little brand, you can still do this. But it means you need to start today with that base chassis. So the base chassis, again, more detail in those videos, but as some examples, we wouldn't use anionic or cationic emulsifiers because they have known incompatibilities. We pick materials that don't have known incompatibilities. We would use non-ionic materials where possible, so non-ionic emulsifiers. We use electrolyte tolerant polymers. So we definitely wouldn't use a standard carbon or something because then if I went to In Cosmetics, for example, and found a, uh, an active that had electrolytes present, and, and a lot of them do if you've got some minerals present, for example, or if you wanted to add something, an acid or it needs a lower pH, these all contain electrolytes or need us to add electrolytes to the formula. And if we need to do that, of course, then we can really dramatically impact the stability if we have, uh, say, a carbamer or similar polymeric material in our formula. So we don't want to use them in a base chassis because they have known incompatibilities, which limits what actives we can put with it. So basically we're building a base chassis and we're using non-ionic materials, we're using materials that are tolerant over a broad pH range or can accommodate a broad pH range. Um, we're using materials that we know will be stable under you know, almost all sorts of conditions. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to add some materials that we purposely know could destabilize the formula. We can take that pH low, we can add too much lactic acid, for example. Now remember, we're not selling the base chassis. We're testing the base chassis. We are putting the base chassis through some really intense situations so that we can see, is this base chassis likely to fail? Now, if it passes, let's say I made my emulsion and I've used some non-ionic uh, non gum, uh, let's say sclerotin gum, for example, and I use a non-ionic high HLB emulsifier blend. Again, there's all sorts I could choose um, and I'd pick that for its stability. I'd pick some um, oils or lipids that is going to suit my potential target market or it could be that um, I use a fair bit of caprylic capric triglycerides or a light skin fill ester, depends on your market here. Again, we can, we can make that sensory be expected um, and then we, we might only change one or 2% of the plant oils to suit the latest trends and innovations. So we could build a formula with some plant oils present that we could change later. 
and of course we'd have some other lipids in there that's going to suit our target market but we already know the input of what we're going to use um, and so we build our base chassis like this we're going to pick a preservative that is tolerant over quite a broad ph range we need to do this because again we don't know what active we're going to add that active might need a final ph around seven it might need a final ph around four we need to accommodate this question mark active so like i say then we can we can actually manipulate that ph we can add things like acids or we can add you know rich electrolyte rich actives even something like sodium pca full of electrolytes we can add that to the formula uh, and we're going to have different base chassis with different conditions different actives that's really going to test that formula then we would put them into accelerated and real-time stability conditions. We would do some freeze thaw. That's obviously a very, um, very disruptive uh, stability test. If something's going to fail, it's usually going to fail under freeze thaw. We'd put one in the incubator at 50 degrees and we'd monitor it. So we've done all of this with our base chassis, including making a base chassis without these um, really testing actives. We'd make different base chassis with these some of these um more testing actives present um and and different ph conditions and we're doing all of this so that we can really test that base product can it handle extreme ph's can it handle electrolyte rich actives can it handle you know acid based actives and again it's really to see will this base chassis be able to handle a question mark active now, a lot of times when you get a lot of the extracts that are out there, or even if you're using some peptides or stem cells, a lot of those actives don't need extreme conditions. So they're gonna go into the formula really easily. But sometimes you'll pick an active and it's got really specific pH requirements, really specific charge requirements, which is why we want to avoid functional materials that have really specific needs because we don't know what we want to add. So we've done this homework already. And again, we would have done this, you know, a year or so ago. So if you haven't already done it and you're watching today and you're like, oh, gee, that, that, that sounds great. I really want to do that with my brand. But how? Start today. And again, start with these videos. I've got a couple of different formulas, um, some natural, some synthetic versions in these videos. Uh, and that way you can start today. And if you start today with this development work, within just a month or so, you could already be in some accelerated testing conditions with some of these tricky materials and then you're already on your way so for next in cosmetics bangkok or you might be going to another one, you might be going to one in in april over in europe you're already on your way with a fast formulation formulation chassis now that's the chassis that then you've got this base formula um, and that's where you'd get your sample from your supplier You'd make a fresh sample up using that base chassis and you start your accelerated testing and you compare your accelerated testing with the innovative active with the robust well, with the other more testing samples that you've made previously and you can see how the accelerated conditions compare and if they track along in a similar way then your new innovative ones you can get to market fast because you've followed its progress you can see that it's it's even more stable maybe than your low ph version um, that you've pre-tested and if that's the case you can get to market really fast with really good confidence that your sample's not going to be unstable and that it's going to last its full shelf life okay and of course then you do need you still need to it doesn't mean you can't do your full testing you still need to conduct your full accelerated and real-time stability testing but it means that you've got a really high degree of confidence that it's going to pass now let's talk about this workhorse active and then i'll open up for some questions um, i really love the workhorse concept and let me talk you through this so imagine you've got this base chassis again we'll talk emulsions because they are one of the most common types of formulations Let's say we put an active in there that we know is always going to work. Now in the video um, that I create, I actually use a CLR active. Um, and I really love, I'm, I'm, you look, CLR are not paying me to say this, I actually love CLR materials as workhorse concepts um, because they've got some fantastic efficacy data. But some of the inky names may not be the latest trending. That doesn't mean the active doesn't do its job. What it means is that we would put one of these actives in the formula 
again, we, we would put it under, you know, low acid, low pH conditions. We'd put it under testing neutral and, and alkaline pH conditions. Um, but it's still got this active present. And, and another reason I like their actives is a lot of them are very, very stable. Um, some of them might need a, a sodium citrate buffer to hold the pH range, but there's your electrolytes. But again, you're testing the formula to prove it's stable in the condition, in the presence of a lot of electrolytes. So you don't have to use their actives, of course. I've used that in the video because I really like the data behind them. But the other thing I like is that you can just have it in the background. Imagine this active is in your base chassis. In the background, you do all your performance and all your efficacy tests. You even have extra subjects that you run with this active present. Okay, and let's say we've done that. We've done that a year ago. And we're doing all our accelerated conditions, all of our testing. We're really robust formula. We know it works. We know it's going to get the results we want. We've done that a year ago. Now this year, we're going to go to In Cosmetics and we're going to see what's the latest trending ingredients. And we, we see the hottest, latest trending ingredient and it's a certain plant from you know, the high Swiss Alps. And we might make our marketing story a lot about that active, for example, because it might be the latest trending ingredient, for example. But we still have our workhorse active present. <clears throat> so we still know that at the very minimum, we're going to get guaranteed results from our workhorse active. We've added another active to enhance the workhorse or perhaps bring about another benefit on top of what the workhorse active is going to do. But we already have guaranteed and known efficacy from our workhorse, and that remains in that formula. We're just adding another active that we've seen in cosmetics, for example. So in that case, we might have two, we might have three actives present, but we've got a workhorse active that we've done all this robust testing on. We know the product's going to work exactly how we want it to work every single time. We just might make it a bit better. So that is how the concept of a fast formulation with a workhorse, uh, that, that's, that's the concept of it. And it means that again, you can get to market fast and first with some of the latest innovations and known, almost guaranteed results because you've already done the testing. You've already done the background work. You might also find that you want the results from that active, uh, but you wanna add some of the latest trending plant oils. Again, let's say Amazon oils are a, a big trending one. Now, some of those Amazon oils, okay, they're gonna add some benefits to the formula, but they're not going to be the ones that have the main efficacy result that say your workhorse active does. But Part of your marketing story can be enhanced by talking about those Amazonian oils when in the background you know your workhorse is doing the job. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if, if it doesn't make sense, let me know, but I definitely do talk about it a lot more in those videos. Um, but that's the concept of a fast formulation. So just remember what a fast formulation is not. It is not just adding actives to a base. It's not just adding actives to a base because a base sitting on a shelf could be sitting there for who knows how long. Um, it may or may not suit the active you want to add. If you've got a base sitting on a shelf and it's already been formulated and developed to 100%, if you add an active, you're then over 100%. So it means you get batch to batch variation. That base sitting on the shelf, you know, it's also not freshly prepared, whereas your active, you want to add it, you want to make sure that your formula's fresh when you bring it out to market because of all your stability testing you've got to conduct on that product. So just remember, a fast formulation is not adding actives or extracts to a pre-prepared base. A fast formulation is using a known and predictable base chassis formula that you've already robustly tested and then adding your actives or extracts or plant oils in a fresh formula and then conducting accelerated stability, some of your performance testing, and comparing that with your base chassis with known and guaranteed stability and, and performance results, and seeing how it performs in the short term so that you've got a really high degree of confidence that you're gonna get the same sort of stability and performance, or even better, from your brand new formula that you can get to market in three or four months. Not having to wait as if it's a brand new formula that you haven't put all those ingredients together before, where you then have to wait nine to 12 months, sometimes more if things don't go to plan. And logistically, let's face it, things aren't going to plan at the moment. So I hope that makes sense. Um, again, if it doesn't quite make sense, please read through my presentation um, because I do, again, in the presentation, I talk about you know what a fast formulation is not 
And I really emphasize it is not just adding actives to a base because there's so many things about that that can go wrong, that can fail. Um, and of course, you need to make sure that your inputs all add up to 100%. So you've got your quality, you've got your stability in place. I do definitely talk about what a fast formulation is. So again, I've got that in detail for you. I've got the video links that I keep referring to. And again, each of those videos, I, I delve in a little bit deeper to all the different formulation types with example formulas that you can definitely go and use. We've already done some, we've only done about three months accelerated stability here because we're not commercializing the formulas. So you would still need to do your full accelerated stability, but there's lots of templates for you to start from. Again, both natural and synthetic choices. Um, this is a fast formulation example, which I've just talked you through. It's about having that base product that you've already done all your robust testing under various conditions. Remember, that's a really important part of your fast formulation principle is that you're already putting it through a lot of tests, a lot of extreme conditions so that you can be really confident that just about any active you want to add can be handled by that formula. Um, I talk more about the workhorse concept in the presentation. Now, of course, there are some risks. Nothing's a guarantee. But even when you go to market nine or 12 months, the normal development time, you still do have some risk that that product could fail real time stability. So if you've done a lot of robust testing with your base chassis earlier on, and if you've really put it through some difficult conditions with some more testing ingredients, then potentially you're gonna get better results if you, if you aren't using a really testing ingredient. So like I say, a lot of the stem cells or peptides or extracts that you'll see at your, your in cosmetics events or your society meetings, a lot of them aren't going to put your formula through half of the rigor that you are going to do first with your fast formulation base. And again, the entire point is so that you can get to market fast and first with some of the latest innovative ingredients that you hear about. You're not going to have to wait the normal nine or 12 month development process. You can skip ahead because you've done a lot of the background work, a lot of the background checks to make sure that you can add these ingredients with a very high degree of confidence that you're going to get the results and the stability and, and you're going to know the sensory and it's going to suit your target market. You've already done all of this homework so that you can just focus on getting that product to market fast and first and loudest with the greatest innovations. Of course, I do have the presentation. It's got some other information about studying with us at the Institute. So you can become a cosmetic chemist. Um, if you're a little lost today, then learn with us so that you can definitely create innovative products fast and meet all of your regulatory obligations, all of your stability obligations. Uh, and of course, make your consumers happy. End of the day, they want some great products that really work. And as a brand or as a chemist formulating for a brand, you want to make sure you're creating fantastic products that really work and are stable without quality issues. And that is what we're talking about with a fast formulation concept. Okay, so let's go over to some questions. Please type in your questions for me. I'm happy to answer them. We are talking about fast formulation, so I do want to keep the questions related to the topic that we're on today. Hopefully I haven't bamboozled you with too much content. I know it's a, it's a big topic um, and it's quite an advanced topic. So again, if you're sitting there and you're a little bit confused, do the background reading. You can still post the question after the live. I still go in once a week and check all the, the questions and, and post answers. You will find a lot of extra information in those extra fast formulation videos um, and even in this presentation, a lot of what I've talked about, a lot of the written information. Like I say, contact us info at personalcarescience.com.au for a full copy of the presentation um, and all the formulas, all the formulas from all the videos uh, and that way you can get creative. You can start from our uh, fast formulation base chassis that we've already presented on our YouTube channel. You can start from there and make adjustments to suit your target market, your consumers, um, your brand. You might want to change a couple of the ingredients to suit your company philosophies. Uh, and, and they're all writing there in that Dropbox folder for you. So please do let me know if you've got any questions. Um, I'm not seeing any questions just yet, which means I either covered the topic really well or you're all sitting there quite lost or, or quite amazed, hopefully. Um, by what's involved with a fast formulation or minimally disruptive formula. And hopefully it's given you some great ideas about some of the, the ways that you can get to market faster for your brand because it really is about getting to market fast and first with some of the latest innovations with 
a, a, a base that you know is going to deliver and be stable and have the right quality, the right sensory for your target market and that you can get there fast. So any questions? Um, we've got a question, which guidelines we follow for cosmetic product stability? Okay, so again, if, if you haven't learned this properly, you definitely do need to learn it properly. If you're in the EU, you need to hold that stability data as part of your product information file. If you're part of the ASEAN countries, it's also a requirement there. Technically, even if a country doesn't have requirements stipulated, it is still a company's responsibility, the products they put onto the market must be safe, stable, and suitable for the consumer over the entire shelf life of the product. Of course, how can you prove quality and stability if you don't hold stability data? And that's what stability testing is for. So even if it's not explicitly written in a country's regulations, the EU, is it's very clearly written, for example, and you've got to hold that in your PIF. Even if you're in a country where you don't have this explicitly written in the regulations, you still need to prove that the product is suitable for a consumer. And you can't do that if you don't have stability results. Now we've got uh, a couple of free um, videos on our YouTube channel that over give an overview of stability. We do have, obviously we get asked sometimes, you know, if you give away all these free videos, why would I study with you? Because, oh my goodness, the YouTube channel is the tip of the iceberg compared to what you learn with us. You know, the, the volume and the content of our learning is internationally recognized, industry recognized. It is so much more than the YouTube channel can ever provide. Um, so we do have our certificate in cosmetic quality and stability that teaches you how to conduct stability testing. Yes, you can conduct your own stability testing, definitely. Um, in fact, studying with us is far cheaper. If you've got multiple SKUs, multiple different products in your product range, it is far cheaper to learn how to stability test and even the equipment, we talk you through all the equipment you need, even setting up a small lab to do your stability testing is far cheaper than outsourcing um, all of your stability testing. And we teach you how to do it all yourself. We teach you the equipment you need. So that's with our certificate in cosmetic quality and stability. And also we teach you stability testing as part of our advanced certificate in cosmetic science and our certificate in advanced hair formulations. And of course, it's definitely part of our diploma of uh, personal care formulation which is the diploma which provides you with the training to become a cosmetic chemist. So you can learn the stability testing just on its own as part of our certificate in cosmetic quality and stability, or you can learn it as part of one of our bigger courses. Again, if you're not sure, just email info at personalcarescience.com.au um, and we can definitely guide you on which program is going to best suit your needs. If you wanted to learn formulation as well, then you know you could do one of our formulation courses or you can just learn it on its own. Oh, it's also part of our certificate in cosmetic regulatory essentials, obviously, because having a stability program um, and being able to interpret results and prove stability is a regulatory requirement. So it's part of that certificate as well. So it's part of a bigger certificates, advanced certificates, and even our diploma, um, or you can study it as a smaller certificate on its own. Um, do we send documents via email? We send you a Dropbox link, and the Dropbox link for all of our YouTube um, live presentations, formulas, reports, that Dropbox link has 400 odd folders in it for everything. Like our YouTube channel's um, got 400 plus reports and videos and formulas. Hey, we're nearly at 100,000 viewers, uh, 100,000 subscribers, sorry. So um, yeah, that's pretty exciting times for us too. Um, we've got a question, man, but there are limitations when acquisition of ingredients depending on country. Absolutely, so you still need to comply with your country regulations. I'm not talking about adding um, ingredients outside of your country regulations. What I'm talking about is having a formula that is robust so that if you can add it, uh, then it can be added to your formula and, and be a very, very stable formula. Um, it has been a very interesting presentation. Thank you. You asked for the presentation. Yes, just email info at personalcarescience.com.au and we'll send you the, the Dropbox link. Um, how do we work with such limitations? Um, if you're talking about regulatory limitations, then definitely learn with us. We do teach 
multiple countries around the world, um, almost global regulatory compliance for cosmetic ingredients and also for cosmetic claims and evidence. So again, this is taught in different courses. We do have our, our cos a certificate in cosmetic regulatory essentials, which obviously focuses on all of your regulatory requirements in the one certificate. Or with our Diploma of Personal Care Formulation, for example, you get taught global, almost global regulations for ingredient searches, um, how to conduct those searches, how to check for limits. Um, if you're thinking more about claims and evidence, then that is taught in our Diploma of Cosmetic Brand Management. We also have our Certificate in Cosmetic Labels and Claims, which is a, again a, a shorter certificate which teaches you all about labels and claims and evidence compliance. And again, that's taught for multiple countries around the world um, so again these are all things we, we have snippets and overviews of these if, if you're not sure go to our youtube channel type in regulation um, or claims or, or something like that and you'll see some some overview videos where we talk about different concepts but definitely our training is is very very much more involved than a youtube video could ever be um, and of course we've got some great assessment tools that actually put you under some real world scenarios and conditions getting you to search for ingredients so that you can check the regulations and limits so definitely you can learn that with us um, and yes it does differ depending on different countries around the world and different ingredients even the same ingredient in different countries may have different limits but what we're talking about today is putting ingredients that you know you're obviously checking regulations and, and adding them to the formula um, based on your local country regulations and limits. But we're really talking about having a robust formula where you can add just about anything you want to that formula and know that you're going to pass stability. Because we've already, remember, we've already done the testing on a formula that we know we've, first of all, we've used ingredients that have very minimal, if none, no incompatibilities. We know that the ingredients in the formula we've prepared is stable over a broad pH range. We know it's not electrolyte sensitive. Um, and then we can add just about anything we want to it and we know it will tolerate it and still be stable. That's really what we're talking about today. And of course, you only add what you know is compliant with your local regulations. Um, but again, we can add it because we've made a minimally disruptive formula, we've made a fast formula that we know and we've got proof that it's stable under very, very adverse conditions. So we've got a very high degree of confidence that when we add any sort of other active and we run accelerated stability and we see those preliminary accelerated stability results, we know because of past testing that that product's very, very likely to pass. Um, so if I got it right, it's not just any base, it's a specific base with specific ingredients known to be compatible with a wide range of ingredients within a wide range of pH. Absolutely, that was a really great summary, thank you. Um, and again, the reason we're talking specific base is because it's got to suit your company philosophy. It's got to suit your target market. So again, you don't want to just buy a pre-prepared base from you know, some private label company, for example, because first of all, that's not a minimally disruptive formula. That base is probably using um, you know, polymeric materials that are electrolyte sensitive. Um, it, it would definitely be using uh, an anionic or cationic material, which again, could ha has known incompatibilities with a multi multitude of, of different actives. Um, and again, we don't want to just grab that base because it may not be exactly what our target market's looking for. You might be working with an, an audience or a consumer base that wants some really natural products and natural ingredients. So that's fine. You would prepare your base chassis to suit that audience. Don't forget sensory too. Sensory is incredibly important. So when you're creating your formula, and again, definitely with emulsions, we know that you know different age groups different ethnicities are going to want different sensory experiences from their product. So again, you can create that very, very specific base to suit your audience. And again, it's about having this really high degree of confidence that your product, no matter what active you add later, is going to have very similar or the same sort of sensory result. So you know your consumer likes the product, you know they're going to like the way it feels on application. And if you add a workhorse active in the background that's just in the background always doing its job, then you know you're gonna have some guaranteed results. So you would pick these ingredients very, very specifically to suit your target audience and what they're looking for from a product. So yes, definitely we're talking about specific ingredients that you're choosing. So it's a product that is still unique to your brand with a high, 
tolerance, a, a really good stability. So again, you can go to your latest events, find the trending and innovative ingredients, and you can add them into that formula, make a fresh sample, and again, you can move through all the development steps extremely quickly because you've got accelerated data and a robust base that you're working with that you can compare to and you know that product's going to perform a certain way and the stability is going to perform and that's really really important because there's nothing worse than a failed batch of product and a product recall and you don't want that but you do want to get to market fast you want to beat your competitors you want to tell the story first then everyone else looks like they've just copied you uh, but you want a great product that feels great for your consumers too so definitely you want a specific type of ingredient specific formula so that you know your consumers are really happy with that sensory experience. Uh, thank you, um, I'll be enrolling, enrolling next year for sure. <laughs> Is the course ADHD and learning disability friendly? Actually, one of the great things that we do with our training, so if you go into our website and you have a look at any of the courses that you're interested in, there is an example a training checklist and assessment. Now these are just samples, these aren't the real thing, but we've got some samples there. If you click on that and have a look, you'll see that we actually break all of our training down into steps. Um, we tell you exactly what to watch, what to read, what to do every step of the way. And we also break it down into steps so that we can help you plan your study. So week one, you should get these items completed. Week two, you should get these items completed. And that just helps you stay on track. And that definitely helps, you know, if, if, you, if you've got a busy life, it helps if you've got, say, ADHD and you need to have really focused study or focused direction. What should I be learning today? What should I be learning this week? So we've got all that there for you. Um, and of course, then we also teach using different ways of teaching. So we've got our online lectures, um, we've got practical activities for you to complete, we've got activities in the text um, that you know we, we get you to complete. Some of those we get you to complete and compare with our answers, and we're doing all of this. And then you've got your assessments, and we prepare you for your assessment questions by giving you the worked examples. And see, this is some of the examples that we don't have this on YouTube. So again, when people say to me, you know, isn't, isn't your training just like YouTube? No, it is nothing like, just like YouTube's free. It's a way of me showing you the latest trends or talking about topics like this, talking about some concepts. But when you study with us, you get so much more. Our diploma, for example, is around 1200 hours of learning. So again, we break it up into little bite-sized chunks so that you can follow along every step of the way. Uh, and you only need to focus on each step at a time complete what's in each week. We also have flexibility with the study. You can take up to three times as long to complete each week. So if you've got a really busy work life schedule, um, you can use these week guides and make it three weeks. You can definitely get through the work in three weeks. Um, if you're not, then you're not studying. But we break it down so you know exactly what to read, what to do, what to watch, uh, what practical work to do, um, what theoretical work to do, what research to conduct, and then we link it to the assessment questions. So again, you can see, okay, I've learned this bit. Now I can answer question one, question two, question three. And we break it down for you. It's all written in that checklist. And, and you get me in your lectures. Um, and I break that down too. We even talk about what we're looking for in the assessment questions. So we guide you every step of the way. Um, and that way you're getting the learning that, that you require. And of course, if you follow the checklist, you'll pass the program because we guide you every step of the way. So yeah, it definitely does help with that. Um, question, oh, I have ADHD and I'm studying. The only thing is you have to be aware of the amount of time to have to finish in. It can get stressful when a deadline approaches. Absolutely. We do send reminders um, constantly. Um, one of the reasons I've been so robust, I'm not sure if many of you know this, but I, I have three children. One of them actually has autism and ADHD. Um, and so by helping him with his schooling, um, I've definitely seen, and, and also we have a lot of students where English is a second language. Um, and definitely there's, there's not a similarity in the, in the learning styles, but when English is a second language, of course, there's terminology or there's concepts I might use that I, I know as an English speaker that when English is a second language, you may not be familiar with. So, you know, we're aware that some of this takes you longer because you might have to research what's this word mean or, or how is this sentence? What's the context of this sentence? So when we put together the learning plan and the checklist, it's definitely there to accommodate people with some learning challenges, people who learn differently, um, people with English as a second language. 
um, because it's not one size fits all. Everyone's different. Everyone learns differently. Some people learn best by doing. Some people learn best by watching. Some people learn best by reading. So we incorporate all of these different modalities into your learning. So it accommodates so many different learning styles. And at the same time, it's a really comprehensive way of teaching so that you understand you're not just, you know, repeat learning something because when you formulate, when you're a chemist, um, you know, you, you're never just ticking one box. You've always got a different brief or different needs of, of different companies or even different consumers. And you need to understand your materials properly. So, and especially this, a, it's a great fit with this topic that, you know, when you're using different actives, you, you need to check what incompatibilities it might have. So when you're formulating for a fast formulation chassis, you know, you need to be aware of all of these potential incompatibilities so that you can test your base chassis first and make sure that it's robust and it's gonna handle all of these different challenges. Um, so yeah, definitely with our learning, we, we teach really comprehensively um, because we want you to be able to uh, predict with relative certainty how certain combinations of ingredients are going to work together. And definitely when we talk about fast formulations, we want to predict some challenging circumstances so that we will have a really high degree of confidence that just about anything we put in this formula, it's still going to be stable. Um, and that it's still going to have the required shelf life, the required performance, the required sensory. So again, it's about knowing your ingredients really well and knowing how materials work together to you know, improve the stability of a formula rather than picking ingredients that may have some known incompatibilities that just don't suit a fast formulation concept. It doesn't mean they don't suit other formulations, definitely, you know, this, this is why we've got so many ingredients out there. Um, and there's some ingredients that might have particularly unique performance or sensory aspects that just don't suit a fast formulation concept. And that's fine too, because that's how we have innovation but those products are just going to take a little bit longer to get to market when you know you could have a bit of both in your range so that you can get to market fast with some of the latest trends and innovations and the really trending hot ingredients but you can have other products that are more unique in their performance or results that don't fit a fast formulation concept and that's fine too you know and when you have a really recognized brand or big brand you'll find that you actually benefit from having both, from having fast formula concepts so that you can stay ahead of trends uh, and then to have other products that are maybe more unique simply because they don't fit a fast formulation concept. They, they then wouldn't be unique enough. And that's important too. Um, oh, so good to hear your comment. Uh, yes, well, you've said dyslexia as well. So yeah, you do definitely need to learn using different ways of learning uh, and we definitely cover all of those. Have a look on our website. You'll see um, if you click, uh, go into say the diploma for example, um, if you click there you see see example of assessment here. And if you click on that you'll see examples, again they're samples only, you'll see examples of our, a checklist, how we guide you along um, and that's not every link in there, we've got a lot more that we provide. Um, and the assessment questions. So you'll see from the assessment questions, you're gonna get an idea of what will I learn? We also have our what will I learn to formulate page on our website, so you can go and have a look there. But again, coming back to the concept of fast formulations and making sure that you've got a really stable base chassis. Um, any other questions on creating these fast formulas and base chassis? Remember, you can contact us, info at personalcarescience.com.au um, for all of our live uh, PowerPoint presentations and for all of our free formulas and reports as well. So you can get all of that information. And again, like I say, we've actually got some fast formulations in that Dropbox folder that you can start from. Some of them are very natural, uh, some are synthetic um, for other performance reasons. Uh, and of course, we've got the videos that you can watch as well that talk you through the different concepts. Um, so yeah, please email us for those and you can definitely use those to get started. You still need to conduct all of your own, the company putting the product onto the market must hold all of the regulatory compliance and stability data for themselves, but you can definitely start with the formulas that we have in our Dropbox folder that we have from our YouTube channel. It's a great place to start. It's gonna cut down some of your development time dramatically because we've already got a tried and tested base in there that you can then adapt to suit your particular organizational needs or company philosophies. 
Do we have any other questions? I think we've covered most of them. Yep. Any other questions about fast formulations? Um, of course, if you're a little shy and you don't want to post, you can always um, put them into the comments of the YouTube later or you can email info at personalcarescience.com.au uh, and they can help you select the best course to suit your study goals. What are you hoping to achieve? Of course, if you do want to be a qualified cosmetic chemist, then you need to study our Diploma of Personal Care Formulation. We have a study only option. Um, if you're not sure if your English is up to speed or if you're not sure if you're uh, dyslexia or ADHD, we've talked about some of those um, other conditions today, you can start with our study only option. Our study only option still gives you every bit of learning that the full course provides. It's 50% of the full course fees. You don't get, uh, you don't have to submit assessments, so you don't have deadlines. You still get all the learning, but no deadlines. Um, you can't get support with the study only option. That is definitely something that's only provided to full students. We do have an exclusive Facebook students and graduates group. And in that group, we've got a lot of our professional students and graduates and even our chemists where we can talk about your own projects. Um, so if you need consulting help or, or project help, you post in that group. That is an exclusive closed group for people studying or graduates of our full courses. That's not part of the study only option. The study only option is also way more flexible with deadlines. So you don't even, don't even really have to worry about a deadline. Um, and you can access it at any time of day or night. Of course, there's no assessments. There is no qualification with the study only option, but it does mean you can start studying at 50% the full course fees so that you can try us on. You can still get all the learning without any of those deadline pressures. You can see how it fits your learning style. You can see just how comprehensive uh, our study materials and the way we train is and just how you can achieve your career goals and your qualifications by becoming a full course student later. You just pay the difference. You just pay the other 50%. There's no penalty fee. Um, you just pay the difference and then you can become a full student uh, and then your deadlines start from then. So you could be a study only student for two years, for example, and then become a full course student and get another three years to complete your diploma. Um, and then that way the pressure, time pressure's off. You're still getting all the learning, all the benefits of learning. You can stay study only forever if you want or you can move to become a full student later and get all those extra full student benefits. We also have a Dropbox folder with thousands of raw materials in it um, and the suppliers who provide those materials. So another comment we get commonly is um, from people, oh, I can't get some of these materials. Well, when you study with us or even as a study only student, you get access to these materials. Um, Obviously, when you are studying with us, you can become a member of your local society of cosmetic chemists and start networking so that you can get in touch with suppliers of materials. Um, look, we get comments from people sometimes saying, you know, as a small producer, I really want to access some of these great materials, but I can't get the minimum order quantity. Please join our Cosmetic Raw Materials for Small Brands Facebook group. That's a public group. Uh, we've got several thousand members in that group. Um, totally public. You don't have to be a student with us to be a part of that group. You can post in there what you're looking for by trade name and your country or location and see if others near you can split the packs. Um, sometimes we get comments about the material situation uh, and, and some people are quite rude, I'll be honest. Um, and it, you know, I'm reading the comments, so sometimes it's, it's not the nicest. Um, but if you wanna have innovative, high performance products, you're going to have to get some of these materials. So we created the Cosmetic Raw Materials for Small Brands Facebook group so that people could access some of these amazing materials without having to buy the really big minimum order quantities. Um, we've done that so that you can access the materials because you can't make award-winning brand leading products just using materials you get from small suppliers. You do have to get some innovative materials. You have to use some of these innovative approaches to have some of these brand leading um, products out there. So, you know, and when you're a student or study only with us, you do get access to that Dropbox where it's got a lot of raw material information so that you know who to contact. You can get in touch with them for the materials. You can join that um, Facebook group. You can join our exclusive group. You can join our public group. These are all different ways that you can access some of the more unique materials that help give your product performance advantages, um, help give your brand marketing and performance advantages. And that's really what it takes to have a real standout product and standout brand. So, you know, sometimes when, when people 
say to me, I can't get these materials. And, you know, like I say, some people can be really, really rude about that. I'm not a supplier. I'm not trying to push materials here. I'm just trying to tell you about innovations. Um, and I'm giving you other solutions that you can access them because, hey, it'd be great if you could and if you use some of these opportunities and, and some of these ways to get the materials so that you can have amazing products. Um, you can't have amazing products just by using everyday standard materials. You, you've got to use at least one or two more unique materials to get more unique results. So I hope that some of these tips and tricks are definitely helpful for you. Um, because, you know, again, I'm, I'm not trying to sell materials to you. I'm, I'm just trying to give you ways of accessing some of the more innovative materials. I'm, I'm giving you ways of creating innovative and fast to market products. Um, so please utilize those, those, those tools, these tips and tricks that I'm giving you. Um, because I'm not going to be a competing brand. I'm, I'm just trying to help you guys achieve your dreams and achieve your goals. Um, so I do hope that's helped. Um, we haven't got any fresh questions. So again, just contact us, info at personalcarescience.com.au. We can definitely give you copies of this. We can help you select which courses are going to help achieve your study needs. On our website, you can see all of our study only options. You can see our pricing. Um, you can see how you can learn with us. And of course, we've got a nice big apply now button where you can download an application form, send that in and get started with your studies. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this topic. Um, I, I, it's a, it was a big topic. It was quite an advanced topic. I hope I've broken it down into parts for you. Definitely extra videos to watch, uh, extra formulas that you can download, and then you can get started making your own fast formulation products. So thank you very much for attending. Um, the lives are always great. It's a chance for me to interact with you. Um, and yeah, please try it out. You'll, even if you had one or two fast formulations in your range, it helps you get to market fast and first with the latest innovative ingredients without having to wait nine or 12 months, but having that, that confidence in its performance and its stability. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments in the, uh, in the, in the box below when the recording gets posted. Uh, thanks again for watching and happy formulating.